Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Well, hello there, and welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. My name is Matt, one of your dose hosts. I like movies. I like to talk about movies. But most of all, I like talking about movies with my good buddy, Mysterious Mike Talent. Mike, how are you, sir? Oh, I'm good, man. I'm good. I, I, I'm I'm eager to talk about this movie, Matt, because I think we might have a little bit of uh, differences of opinion on this one, and and that's always fun. Mike, uh, since I can't uh, type, do you know what episode this is? Oh uh, no, I have no idea, Matt. Uh, two seventy three. No, I think it's two sixty five. I think that's what I'm going to guess here. I'm going to type in an R and see if it shows up hold on oh it does like first thing there we go there you heard two clicks sorry for all of you yes it is 265 this week it was my pick and i shot myself in the face i knew it was going to be terrible because everybody said it was going to be terrible i 100 agree this week we're talking about sony's latest marvel film morbius mike why don't you give us the rundown all right matt so this movie was de- directed by Daniel Espinoza. It was written by Matt uh, Samza and Burke Sharpless. It's starring Jared Leto, Matt Smith, Andrea Ar- Arona, uh, Jared Harris, uh, Tyrese Gibson. And this movie is about a biochemist. Michael Morbius tries to cure himself of a rare blood disease, but he is inadvertently infects himself with a form of vampirism instead. All right, Mike. So you said we're going to have a differing opinion on this. So I'm excited to hear what you really, really think about this film, because I agree with the critics. This movie was crap. Uh, so I think this movie was fine. It's not a work of art is okay um the thing that i think it's lacking quite substantially is just that that marvel touch you know that just something about it it's just it was just a fine i mean it's just a plain story like it's just a movie like it wasn't i don't know it didn't seem very marvel-y is it can we use that as a a description marvel-y I believe the nomenclature is Marvelicious. Okay. Yeah, it was not Marvelicious at all. Um, but, oh, I mean, as a movie, like, if you look at it as not a Marvel movie, it was okay. It's not no, great. No, dude. As a movie, it was it was shit. As a movie, it was shit. Marvel or not, this movie sucked. I don't know, man. I guess I, I, I don't know. Maybe I saw a different movie. <laughs> Either that, or you must have slept through it like my mom did. Oh, how many snores was uh, for for your dad? Like, how many snores? Are you still doing that? Yeah, but my dad didn't go because my sister was at my my sister. My mom was at my sister's house, so my brother in law and my sister and my mom went and watched it. Yes, Frankie La La. Here's your shart- shout out. And my mom pointed out that every single one of them fell asleep. So that's at least three snores right there. Okay, well, I didn't fall asleep in it, shockingly. Really? You're sure? No, would you I didn't re- fall asleep. Would you have realized if you fell asleep, though? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Okay, uh, I'm going with it. I'm going with it, Mike. You better not be lying. T- s- okay, so, Matt, I guess... um, Matt, I have a, a technical comic book question for you. Uh-oh. I might not be able to answer it, because I don't pay a lot of attention to Morbius. All right. Well, when Morbius is flying around, why did he have, like, weird remnants? Like, I don't know, dude. That's one I didn't get, like, just slowly rolling into the film, is why when he's fighting, there's, like, a trail of, like, dust of him. Like, it's clearly, like, his, like, jumper, like, when he's in prison, and then there's, like... I, I don't know what the hell that shit is. I, I, I don't get it. Like, do, if I breathe it in, am I, like, breathing in Dr. Morbius? Because that's kind of weird. Yeah, I didn't know if it was just they're going for some kind of visual effect. I mean, it kind of looks cool, but at the same time, I'm like, well, what is it? Like, why? 
Mike, it, it was more confusing than cool to me. All right. I was just going on a visual aspect, man. Purely visual. So, Mike, I think we should go ahead and start talking about this, even though it's not a visual aspect yet. Do you, do you, do you think I should start talking about some beers, Matt? No, no, Mike. I got something better than beers for movie lovers. Mike, we have another giveaway from our friends at Paramount Pictures. Oh, yeah, yeah. The contractor, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So for those of you who do not know, I haven't seen him for a while. Uh, Chris Pine did a new action film, and it looks really good, like really, really good. And it's currently out in theaters, and it's available on video on demand. I I watched the trailer. I think it looks phenomenal. I mean, it has Chris Pine. It has uh, a lot of big names. Uh, Chris Pine, Ben Foster, uh, Kiefer Sutherland, a lot of action stars. This, This one... This one looks cool, dude. It really does. Yeah, you know, I like the revenge movies, and this this looks like it has a little bit of that, so I'm all in. Okay, Mike, so what should our listeners do to be entered for a free rental of the contractor? What do you think? Um, Tell us their favorite Jared Leto movie, and it can't oh, be nice. this one. It can't be Morbius, though. Okay, all right. I like it. I like it, Mike. That's a good suggestion. So for those of you who want to be entered in a drawing to win a free rental of The Contractor, go ahead and email me, Mike, or nerds at realfilmnerds.com and tell us your favorite Jared Leto film. Oh, Matt, that reminds me. So uh, I I used to work at a movie theater, Matt, and the only celebrity or anybody I ever saw was Jared Leto. We, we we sold him a ticket. He watched some terrible movie. I can't even remember what movie it was, but it was awful. Where? Was this in Flagstaff? Yeah. I was going to say, there's no way in hell Jared Leto went to Sierra Vista. No, he was passing through with his 30 Seconds to Mars band. I could see that because, you know, being I-40 and Flag and all that, that's interesting. That's cool. Was he a cool guy? Uh, yeah, he was nice. I mean, like uh, a lot of the single ladies were like swooning. Um, but uh, other than that, like, I mean... He- just bought a popcorn and a Coke and went and watched a movie. <laughs> like, Mike, were you swinging? Uh, no, no. We were, we were, we, you know, we sold him the ticket to enjoy the show. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay. Well, Mike, I still got to do the business. So let's go ahead and get it out of the way for our good friends over at Paramount. Here we go. The Contractor, starring Chris Pine, is now in theaters and available on digital and on demand. When a discharged elite Special Forces sergeant, played by Chris Pine, is desperate to provide for his family, he contracts with a private military force and unravels a deep conspiracy, sending him on the run for his life. You can buy or rent The Contractor and watch it today. It is rated R and it again it's from our friends over at Paramount Pictures. Thank you, Paramount, again, for helping us out and promote our pod by giving us awesome movies to give away to our listeners. So go ahead. You heard it here. Uh, Mike is friends with Jared Leto because he sold a movie ticket to him once. So let us know what Mike's best friends, your favorite movie of Jared Leto is. There. I, I tried. I tried. Mike. <laughs> yeah. That's, that, that was pretty good, Matt. It was pretty good. It just got a little stumbly at the end there, but that was good. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm pretty good and pretty quick, but sometimes I drop the ball. So, all right, let's go ahead and move on. But, dude, the contractor, I'm excited. This looks like a good one. Dude, I'm jealous. I'm jealous to our listeners. So make sure and hit it up. Mike, go ahead. Let's move on. Morbius, it's a piece of shit. Nobody should watch it. Uh, I want my money back. Next. Wow, wow, man. Wow. <laughs> So, man, I, I totally disagree. Like, it's it's fine. It's just a movie. It's like a popcorn movie, man. It's, you don't take it very seriously. It's fine. Uh, okay, so I, I don't want to get into, like, why I dislike it so much. Because it's spoilers. All right, all right. Well, I can I can start working on, on our, our getting rid of that, Matt. What what are you drinking this, this fine morning, evening, afternoon? <laughs> Ah. Well, Mike, thank you for asking. So this movie was a strong movie that requires a strong drink. Mike, I am drinking a little Captain and Coke. 
Wow. Wow. All right. Strong, strong drink. Yeah, it's mostly Captain, but there's a splash of Coke, so I got a an ice. Yeah, you just got to darken it up a little bit. Correct, correct. I got to make myself feel better about myself when I look at the drink, right? Okay, oh. so what IPA are you drinking today, Mike? Oh, Matt, it's not an IPA. Oh, shock. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, Mags for my birthday got me a craft beer su- subscription, so I, I get different beers in from all over the country. This sounds like the one that I had that Stacey got for me for a while. Who's it from? Uh, this one's from Reformation Brewery. Nice. Uh, and uh, it's named Jude, and it is a Belgian-style triple ale. So strong. Do you like it? Uh, yeah, it was good. That one was good. It's just named uh, Jude, not like Hey Jude? No, just Jude. There was uh, There was one that was yesterday that was a little weird. It was like a... It was a peanut butter stout, which sounds good and usually is good, but it was like a little too hoppy. I know it's a little weird, Matt, but it was too hoppy. Especially coming out of your mouth. Yeah, but for a peanut butter stout, you don't want them to be hoppy. So it was weird. No, you want it to be kind of sweet. Do you remember the company on that? I'm sure you have a couple more, though, because my subscription, they gave us, they gave me three or four of each beer every single time it came in. Yeah, yeah, I do have a couple more. I I don't remember its name. I'll I'll, uh, I'll I'll look it up. Just curious. You know what, Mike? Why don't you do the save one for next week? Okay, I will. And then you can piss and moan about how happy it is on air. Yeah, sure. Again. <laughs> okay, Mike. So it's time for your favorite part of the Real Film Nerds podcast. Mike, go ahead. What is today's? awful dad joke to match this awful movie i got dad jokes i don't think they understand no gotta think i'm funny other people never laugh though dad jokes <laughs> come on man it's not so bad all right why did the man get fired from the bank on his first day he took all the money with him he pushed a woman who asked to check her balance yes that's a dad joke. That is definitely a dad joke. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. That is a good dad joke. All right, Mike. So now my favorite part. This is not a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. This is a Sony Marvel movie. So we still need to know the answer, Mike. How does the amazing Morbius relate to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? All right, Matt. So this movie was, uh, you know, a Marvel movie, but from Sony. And um, I guess uh, it was a little bit tougher than I thought it would be to 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 match it up. But I was able to find somebody. So uh, one of the art directors for this movie, uh, Nigel Evans, also worked on Spider-Man Far From Home as an art director. See, Mike, you did it, even though this movie is terrible. So, so Matt, talking about Marvel, one thing that I, I guess was probably a little bit of a, a, a clue that maybe this wasn't going to be so great was when they, uh, the opening scene of the movie with the credits, they didn't have the normal Marvel thing. They have, so whenever there's a Sony Marvel film, they do the Marvel comic book where it flips. When it's a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, they do the one of the audio that you just heard a little bit ago, played on guitar, but the real one. So that's the difference. That's how you can tell when it's a Sony Marvel film versus a Marvel Cinematic Universe film. And they are no. two separate universes. Yeah. Okay. Which we will right. get into when we start talking about Michael Keaton and his lackadaisical end credit scene. Nothing about him. A hundred percent about the film. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask you about that as well, Matt, but we haven't gotten there. Well, let's just put it this way. The shit don't make sense. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, Mike. So convince me why Morbius 
is an adequate film. Well, you know, there's a beginning and there's a middle and there's an end. And it is projected through a projector. There's actors in it. There's a director and there's writers. Wonderful. It's a film. Next. <laughs> yeah. Uh, man, it's fine. You know. No, uh, it's not. It was the kids. Awful. The kids. You know, they have problems. They grow up. You know, superstar. Like I don't know. Would what what like? I I guess I guess I went in with no expectations, so it was like pretty hard to to beat that. Like. I'll say this. Jared Leto's acting was wonderful. He always does a pretty dang good job. He's a good actor. He just is. And he did his method acting. People talked about it on set that he walked around with crutches and all those things. What kills it for me is the story was just crap, dude. They had Dr. Michael Morbius and his best friend Milo, who he calls Milo as a joke, and sticks. He's an adult and he's still known as Milo, even though that's not his real freaking name. That's beside the point. It's just, you don't really have a villain, and you get the villain as his best friend, which is a trope, and it just, it didn't do a lot for me. It just didn't. It was just very lackadaisical. I mean, Morbius is a villain character in the comic book world. He is a enemy of Spider-Man. I don't know why they keep making these movies that are enemy of Spider-Man without Spider-Man. If you had Spider-Man in here, this movie would be awesome. Well, I mean, he, yeah, I mean, he seemed like the good guy in this movie. Like, he was like a nice dude, and everybody loved him, and, you know, uh, there's a couple scenes where he's like, Michael, Michael. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm hoping they were calling back to uh, the Lost Boys. I really hope they were, because that was fun. I think they were, dude. <laughs> I think they had to. But um, it, it, anyway, it, it was just, I mean, I guess you're right, but uh, who else would have been the bad guy? Like, I, I don't know. Like, Right. That's the point. They, they didn't think it out. And they went through reshoots and all kinds of shit with this film. And it still is a travesty. It's still just awful. What, what do you think, Matt? You know how you were dis disappointed a few weeks ago when this was delayed like a month or whatever? What do you think they changed? I'm, I'm sure know. they changed something. Whatever they did, it couldn't have made it better. What if it did? Oh, Jesus. What the hell would they do? I don't know. Dude, I don't know. You know what they did, Mike? And this is one of the biggest sticking points for me when it comes to vampire films. Jared Leto didn't sparkle. If they took out the sparkle, I'm going to be upset. Ah, that is that is always a a, a sticking point. He's uh, I was on J uh, team uh, Leto, but now I'm not. Dude, if he if the vampire doesn't sparkle, that's a full reel right there. Just bam, no sparkle, no reel. I I don't know. Like um, to me, like when I when I got done with this movie and I, I got back home and I was talking to Mags, I I was like. It's just a movie. It was okay. It just didn't have that Marvel je ne sais quoi. It's uninspired. There's just nothing there. There's nothing memorable about it. Like, okay, the one scene I really liked was probably the first scene where he becomes the vampire and he blatantly slaughters everyone on the on the ship without even thinking about it. I think that was probably one of the best parts of the whole thing because it was showing you him becoming a vampire and not being able to control it. Oh yeah, man. He 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 was pretty brutal. But after that the movie I guess changes because then after that he's trying to control it and he's Mr. Scientist and all that and but I guess if he's supposed to be a bad guy, yeah, they really messed this one up. Yeah, why not just continue that from on i mean it doesn't the, no one says this movie has to end on a happy note no one says that the morbius has to be a good guy let him be this horrible terrible villain and lead into you know a, a villain for spider-man which clearly is coming down the road clearly well his his um best friend uh milo not milo he <laughs> seem to have a lot of money. So it could have been like, if they kept the story as Morbius is a bad dude, 
It could have had My- Milo been the good guy and come after him with all of his money to like fight against him and stuff. That would have been cool. Dude, I would have been down with that. That you know, where the hell did Milo get his money anyways? Cuz like Dr. Morbius is at this school, right? And yeah. So is Milo. He's on a f- he's on a freebie. He's like, you know that you know how they let one free one in? Yeah. That's Morbius. That's him. Yeah. Uh, okay, I get it. I get it. I mean, I I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh Sure, you're right. I mean, and the love story, I actually kind of liked that there wasn't really much of a love story. Like, there's a, like a relationship, kind of. It's not even really formed. And then, you know, I guess she gets kidnapped and all that stuff. But, like, I don't know. It's kind of a weird... Well, I like that they didn't, like, force a love story, I guess is a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah, they didn't. So, that's nice. I, I don't yes, know. I mean, see, there you go. That was the nicest thing you could say. I saw yeah. it. You don't have to have a love story in every single movie. So yeah, that was that was nice. And then obviously, uh, she there's going to probably be a sequel because she's now a vampire. Right. Right. And again, no sparkle. <laughs> Are you sure? Did you look real hard? Her eyes were red, but no sparkle. So she was just really angry. Okay. <laughs> All right, all right. Well, I'm trying to think of some other. Um, in the comic, is is the blue is the artificial blood blue? Like they showed, like that was weird. Honestly, I don't remember. I don't remember them talking much about artificial blood in the comic, but that was pretty freaking weird. And I think they just used it in the film as like a way to differentiate between the two, because they kept oh, calling yeah. it blue or red. He's like, you know, when you go red versus blue, it was just, you know. Yeah, like I, I didn't know if they were trying to mention like like a Halo kind of game or what they were doing. Red there. versus blue. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of um, that, Mike, did you get your Xbox yet? They're available now. You can buy them. No, no. They finally made like five, fifteen. Yeah, I'm excited. Nice. No, we'll see. No, no. I I don't have it. When when does yours come in? Is it did it come in yet already? No, not for a few more days. But my my question for you, Mike, is this. When was the last time you turned on your Xbox One? Because it's going to take 37 hours to update. Ah, fall update. So I've got to get spring, probably spring part two, probably April. Yeah, there's probably like six reboots and updates. Now, how many years is that? No, no, it was last year. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Did you see uh, Borderlands has a new game out? Or not Borderlands, but it's in the Borderlands kind of world? No. Really? Yeah, dude. I have it's called Tiny Tina's Wonderland. <laughs> nice. It's more fantasy slash RPG than it is Borderlands. It looks good. I don't know. I might have to pick it up. It's expensive, though. Video games are expensive because, you know, everything is fucking expensive again. I don't think things were not expensive before, Matt, but they just got really more expensive now. How about that? Yes. Yes. <sighs> things just have gone up even more. And, you know, not to talk about the war in Ukraine. Yes, it's a horrible tragedy what's going on over there. It's absolutely ridiculous. We don't condone it. We are 100% against it. So us pissing and moaning about gas prices and the cost of everything going up because of that war is is a part of it. It's not 100% the war in Ukraine, but it is definitely a part of it. So, you know, our pain of having to spend more money is nowhere near like losing your entire city. So let's just rem- keep that in mind, Mike. Yep. Yep. No, we will. So, okay. I'll get back on topic. Mike, so what did you think of the end scenes with Michael Keaton? I was confused. I was like, what? Yep. That makes two of us. Is that a a tie-in to Spider-Man? So if you remember the original Spider-Man Homecoming, Michael Keaton was the villain known as Vulture. So yeah, I think what yeah. they're trying to say is that in the multiverse that when all that shit happened with Spider-Man in No Way Home, I guess Michael Keaton somehow got thrown into the Sony universe versus going from the MC, you know, he went from the MCU to the Sony universe, which makes no sense because in Spider-Man Homecoming, No, no Way Home, everybody came from other universes into the MCU. They didn't go outwards. Well, maybe that Doctor Strange messed up the spell again. Maybe, 
But that's the only thing I can rationalize behind it. But what it's leading to, Mike, here's the one that really pisses me off, is the second end cutscene. It shows Vulture in his full regalia and his garb and his wings and all that shit, which is awesome. It looks really good. Where the hell did he get it from? Because if you remember in Spider-Man Homecoming, the only reason he has that shit it works is because it's power from Thanos' army and their alien artifacts. No one says Thanos exists in the Sony universe. No one says the aliens that work for Thanos exist in the Sony universe. Where the hell did he get all his shit from? Matt, I think you're getting too uh, too in the weeds on this one, man. You just gotta you get you you just gotta hit the I believe, man. I believe. I can only hit it so hard, Mike. I know you punched the shit out of that some bitch. I don't know, Matt. You're you're right. No, I mean that seems awfully odd, and I'm sure Sony's heard about it now from all the 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 fans. And they're like, dang, you didn't catch that. So whoever that intern was is is not going to be with the company anymore. No, I, you know what they're doing is they're setting up the Sinister Six, which hopefully that happens and Spider-Man is actually in there because if that happens, that'll be a lot of fun. But um, Morbius is not part of the original Sinister Six. I think he joins up later on down the road. But the original Sinister Six is Doc Ock, uh, Vulture, Electro, Mysterio, Sandman and Craven the Hunter. So I'm wondering if they're just not going to have Craven the Hunter come out and they'll have Morbius do the role of Craven the Hunter because we've already seen everybody else. We've seen Doc Ock, we've seen Vulture, we've seen Electro, we've seen Mysterio, we've seen Sandman, we've seen them team up in the latest Spider-Man film. So clearly that's what we're getting. We're going to get a Sinister Six film. Question is when and are we going to get Craven the Hunter or is Morbius taking his place? Well, are we going to have the original actors? I don't know if you're going to be able to get all those people. I, I don't know. Who knows? Probably it's not. not M- it's not MCU. Yeah. It's not MCU. Well, but think about it, Mike. So Vulture is the only one out of all of them that is from the MCU. Doc Ock is from Sony. Uh, Electro was from Sony. Mysterio, Sandman, all from Sony. They were the ones that that transferred over into the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the last Spider-Man film. So the only one they needed the rights to was Vulture, which they got in this movie. Well, wasn't uh, Mysterio in, uh, was it Far From Home? Oh, That's yes. the second one, right? I take that back. Yeah, yeah you're right, Mike. So they're going to have to have Mysterio somehow come into the Sony Universe too. Good call. All right. Well, I'll stop, but... Yes, I'm I'm nerding out because the Sinister Six is pretty cool. It's all it's a lot of fun. Okay, yeah. Um, well, so I mean, it it's fun that we didn't really agree, but you know, this movie is just okay. It is not, dude. I don't recommend anybody watch this movie. I thought it was terrible. Okay, okay. The only reason I would say anybody watch this is for Jared Leto's acting. I think he did a good job. The CGI was pretty much crap for the most part. The um story was absolute crap the sets were decent but the only saving grace is jared leto god dude al madrigal i i like al madrigal i have a picture with him because i went and saw his stand-up show that oh. guy totally was fucking foaming it phoning it in and then tyrese are you fucking kidding me tyrese i don't even know if that dude was sober when he filmed this movie Oh yeah, no, Tyrese. I was I was gonna mention his performance was terrible, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I was just expecting another Fast and the Furious. Like, I think he might have got lost, and like they just threw him in. Dude, I agree. I mean, I don't know where he came from. I I like Al Madrigal. I was sad about that because he just he did a crap job. Um, the dude from Resident Evil and a bunch of other movies, Jared Harris. Uh, he plays the doctor. He he always does a good job. Uh, yeah, but he's barely in it. Yeah, I know. Jared Leto did a good job. The dude that played Milo, he wasn't terrible, but he wasn't great. He was kind of mediocre at best. I don't know. I don't know, dude. I I I had I guess I just had higher hopes for this, especially with all the research and the pushbacks and all that other shit. So, uh Mike, why don't you go ahead and tell our listeners 
what amazing film we are going to talk about next week. All right, Matt. So uh, it's always important when a Michael Bay movie comes out that we go watch it. And this upcoming week, we've got Ambulance. And it's his, uh, you know, it's his newest movie to come out. And it's coming out in the theaters instead of uh, the last one we watched, which was uh, Six Underground. Uh, that came uh, to Netflix and maybe to the theaters, but I think mostly just to Netflix. But, you know, Matt, we always have to go for the Bay Bang. And I was just, uh, I was watching The Rock the other day, Matt. Man, I love that movie. It's a great movie. It is. That's one of my favorites of the Bay Bang. It's The Rock. But yeah, th- this looks like a lot of fun, man. I-, I really wanted to see this. We've been seeing trailers for this for a while. Michael Bay... Great cast, you know, Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, uh, Elsa Gonzalez, uh, just, it looks, it looks like your typical Michael Bay action explosion thriller of a bank heist gone bad where they steal an ambulance. Mike, I, I'm down for it. Let's do it. Let's, let's go watch this one. Yeah. Yeah. No, let's do it, man. Um, at least at the bare minimum, Matt, you know, it'll at least have some sort of, uh, uh, circly shots, you know, you know, the, the Michael Bay type shots. So those are usually pretty good. Some of them. So, uh, I know in six underground, the like magnet scene was awesome. Like really, really cool. Do you think he can do more than six underground in this one? Do you think it has that kind of budget? Cause six underground, they basically just handed him a check and said, here, make a freaking amazing movie uh i don't know man uh i i it seemed like he did have a lot of money to because he loves practical effects so like when you see stuff happening it's really happening uh for the most part um so i mean you know saying that and then i was just thinking about all the transformers but i mean all the explosions were real (laughs) yes yeah the transformers weren't but the 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 plosives were (laughs) <laughs> yeah 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 but uh yeah i don't know man um i guess we'll have to go see i i'm not sure Do you, i doubt they gave him a blank check to just make whatever he wanted oh that's that was just netflix doing that they're like we got him let's get let's have michael bay be happy so he'll keep making netflix movies so i don't know man we'll see but uh i i'm looking forward to this one in the theaters there's some shots that I'll point out when we review it that look like, at least in the trailer, were shot with a drone. Because there's no other way they would have been able to do it, unless it's uh, CGI. Ah, okay. So there might be some CGI or, or a drone or maybe a combination of both. I mean, I, I think I think I did see something. He said there was some CGI, so uh, I don't know if it's for that, well, for that particular shot. The one I'm talking about in the trailer is, is I'm not sure if it's an ambulance or if it's a car or something, but it's like jumping, it hits something, it's like flying through the air, and you see this shot from the side, and it's it clearly looks like a drone hauling ass right up to the to the vehicle and then goes underneath it. I'm like, that has to be a drone if they did it in real life. Yeah, yeah, that 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 sounds CGI ish. Or yeah, uh. or CGI. But a drone totally could pull that shit off. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I notice all the time now. Drone, drone shot, drone shot, like all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's affordable. It's, you know, you can do it now, even on low budget movies and stuff, because you don't, you don't have to have a helicopter. Yeah, dude, the cameras are getting smaller and smaller and better and better quality. It's just nuts. It really is. They're still not quite to the level where they're, you know, movie quality. So most movies actually use like legit like reds or something strapped to a big ass drone, but they're still, I mean, some of the stuff I've seen and some of the stuff I've done is, it's amazing. It, it really is. So anyways, all right, Mike, well, let's get this shit out of the way. Let's pull off this bandaid. Mike, how many reels do you give Morbius? Uh, I'm giving it a uh, three out of five reels. You know, God, dude, I... you and my mom, she gave it three out of five reels this morning. Maybe you're really her son. Maybe that's what it is. You, she would be happy because then she'd be getting two grandkids from you. Me, nothing. <laughs> well, she's got some grandkids from the other other uh, kids. You're you're good, dude. You're good. Yeah, she's got three, and then another, you know, another one coming down the pike. Yeah, dude, that's good. Four's good. Four's plenty. How many does she need? 
I mean, and two of them, two of the grandkids are already adults. It's crazy. It's craziness. Yeah, they're, they're going to have more kids themselves. Yeah. One of them's going to have like 10. Well, the, you know, the shitter, though, is that uh, I lost the bet. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I lost the bet. You, you don't remember the bet I had with my sister? Oh, that, that Michael was going to have a kid before... That Michael or Marcus would have a kid before I do or she does. And nope. Oh, dang. Lost. What do you owe her? A dollar? Yeah. Two bits. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. I bet hard and I bet fast. All right, Mike. So you want to hear how many reels I give this piece of shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can you get it negative reels? Because I feel like that's what you no, want to give it. No, it's not that bad. I, I give it one and a half. And that's just because I'm being nice. Okay. All right. <sighs> Well, it's always fun when we don't agree, Mike. I think it makes for the better podcasts. So, all right. Well, I that's all I got. I, I, I think I jabbered on enough. Mike, do you feel like you jabbered on enough, or do you need to reinforce your three reels to the rest of the audience? Because I don't see it. <laughs> uh, no, no. I think I've defended myself just fine. It's it's just a popcorn movie, man. It's okay. Like, it's it's... So there's a lot of, like, the story sucks, and, you know, it's just not the best movie. I don't know. Just it's It just wasn't a very, very Marvel-y movie. Um, no fucking sparkles. Yeah, no sparkles. <laughs> so, no. Um, anyway, I, I, you know, I guess with that, uh, you know, make sure to email us uh, your favorite Jared Leto movie for uh, The Contractor. And, um, yeah. Catch us on the next pod. Thanks for listening, everybody. And uh, go out there, stream a movie, or go watch a movie at the theater. And uh, we'll uh, talk at you next week. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now, go out and catch a movie. Matt Hinshaw joining Lisa Live and Local this morning on Magic 99.1. How you doing, Maddie? Absolutely incredible. How are you, Lisa? <laughs> You're so sarcastic. <laughs> uh, we can just hear it in your voice. I'm doing pretty darn good, but I, I join you. I'm tired, but I'm tired for different reasons than you are. <laughs> what, what are you tired from? Just a couple rounds of golf over the weekend, you know? I mean. So, in other words, Fun. You were out having yeah, fun. Yeah, I'm tired Drinking from having and, fun. Yeah. Well, now, I said playing golf. Now, why did you say drinking? I mean... Because that's what you do when you play golf. Maybe that's what you do when you golf. I don't golf. <laughs> I I, am, I eliminate the golf. I just stay at home and watch TV and, you know, yeah. watch a movie and drink. I got gotcha. you. I, I, gotcha. I don't need a little car to drive around and right. have a beer. The, the excuse <laughs> that you're out on a golf course so you can have a refreshment, you don't need that, huh? No, no. Oh, okay. All right. Hey, we're here to talk about yes, the ma'am. movies. You saw more. Morbius on Thursday night, opening night, and you didn't miss anything. Really? Yeah. You knew it wasn't going to be good. Yeah. Well, everybody was saying it was going to be bad, and it, yeah, and yeah, it, was. it lived up to the hype. <laughs> yeah. How bad was it? I, uh, I mean, it was rough. It could have been a whole lot worse, but yeah. it just there, there's no point. There's like, no point. It's almost like the Venom movie in a way, um, but they were successful with Venom at least. Yeah. Uh, it's one of Spider-Man's villains that has a solo movie for no reason. So it's just, why? Yeah. Why are we watching this? Why? Who was his villain? It was just kind of lackadaisical. The uh-huh. the story was okay. It was just, yeah. It, there just wasn't much. There just what wasn't much anything. What about the special anything. effects? Oh, they were terrible. They were. Yeah, they were not very good at all. Oh, yeah, man. I don't know what they spent their money on, and I don't know what the reshoots were. Yeah. But, yeah, you know, I mean, the acting was at least decent. I mean, mm-hmm. Jared Leto did okay. Well, you know, we love he him. Did. Yeah. yeah, but it's just, just it not was great. just not. Yeah, there's okay. there's no point to this movie. Were there a lot of people in the theater when no. you went? No. no. Okay. No. <laughs> All right. No. How many reels are you gonna give it? I give it one and a half, and one that's being and gracious. Half? <gasps> yeah. I don't think you've ever given a movie on this show that low of a ranking. Maybe rating. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I don't uh, know. I don't remember. Okay. But yeah, yeah. It was. 
I don't recommend wasting your time. Don't waste your time. And you said this is only in theaters. Yep. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Okay, so should we talk about what we're going to talk about next week? Or are I, we calling your mother? We, we can call my mom, okay. but I don't know what we're going to talk about next week because my co-host is his pick and he didn't get back to me. He didn't. So I have an idea. Yeah. I think we're probably going to talk about Sonic 2. Okay. But I don't know if he can make it to a theater or not. So it's up to him, but All right. I'm leaning towards Sonic 2. Sonic 2, and yeah. that's about... Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> oh, oh Lord. <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't it automatically go, go. I didn't automatically go there. I understand. I'll let it go. I mean, Sonic the Hedgehog. I didn't see the first one. How could you not see the first I one? I just Jim yeah. Carrey's in it. Yeah, it's good. It's he worth seeing. He plays Doctor Robotnik. Yeah, is it worth it? It's We're... okay. It's fun. It's cutesy. Well, can I see it for free on one of my streamings that I pay for? Oh, probably. <laughs> okay, all right. I saw it in the theaters. Let's so. call your mother, Ma yes, Hinsha, Coming up next. Right away on Magic. It's Ma Henshaw on Magic 99.1. How you doing there, Ma? Hi. I'm fine. I got back from Phoenix in one piece, so I feel really good. Oh, well, that's an accomplishment, Ma. Nice job. I heard you saw Morbius at the movies. What'd you think? Yes, I did. I liked it very much. I thought it was very interesting and not what I expected. Okay, well, what did you expect? I expected more um, vicious, scary uh, kind of things where he was, you know, hurting people, et right. cetera, et cetera. Like a horror film. Yes, but it wasn't. It was how he came up with, well, I can't, I don't want to say okay. but how he came up with the medications, et cetera, and that he was a doctor. Okay. I thought that was really cool. Okay. All right. Well, your son did not like it at all. Oh. He gave it one and a half reels. One and a half? Yes. Oh, it was better than that. My goodness. <laughs> you clearly saw a different Morbius than I did. Oh, that's funny. Well, oh, maybe he was really good, though. Ooh, Jared Leto and you're talking about? Jared, the, the Michael... Michael Morbius, which was Jared Leto. Okay, yeah. okay, very good. Um, so did Pa Henshaw see the movie? No, Pa didn't. My okay. daughter and her husband went. Okay, and were there any snores? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you all fell asleep, huh? Well, I fell asleep twice, but not for very long. I And I'll t I can't say which part, I, but it was toward the beginning. Okay. And then they fell asleep, and I didn't know it, but... My daughter told me they did fall asleep, too. Okay, all right. How many cookies are you going to give it? Oh, heavens. I'm going to give it three. Three cookies out of five. Okay, very good. Well, you know, she's right there with Google users. 73% like this movie. That's a lot. I, I don't know. I think she must have been out golfing before she went to the movies. <laughs> I you're wish funny. I could golf. Uh, yeah, no, you're funny, no, Matt. I was at the movie, really. <laughs> yeah, I believe you. And Rotten Tomatoes gave it 17%, so you're both right. That's right. They're with the real reviewers and the real movie critics. Thank you, Ma, for chatting with us this morning. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, you guys, catch Matt's podcast. It's called The Real Film Nerd. You can get it anywhere you can get your podcasts. Yep. And you can get them right here every Monday morning on what station, Matt? The Magnificent Magic 99.1. You got it.